Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Little. I'm here today with episode 287 of Weekly Poker Hand. I want to thank you for being here with me today. And here we have a doozy from Best Bet Jacksonville. George, who's playing a lot of pots, raises to $100 with 8-2 of clubs under the gun plus 1. Then, folds around to Bart on the button, who has pocket aces. All right. Bart's definitely going to re-raise. This is Bart Hansen. He has a training site, Crush Live Poker. They have a lot of great information for live poker. I actually make videos for them every once in a while about tournaments. And Bart raises to $340. Kind of a weird amount. So George raised to $110.25. Bart makes it three, I'm sorry, makes it $350. And then Brandon in the big blind has ace queen of diamonds. So I'm not exactly sure how Bart's going to be playing this game. I don't think Bart is um, someone who plays at best bet a lot. I know he lives in California as far as I know. So he probably is not completely aware of the dynamics at the table, but he's paying attention, right? He's aware that George is playing a whole lot of pods. So I imagine Bart's going to be three betting with just a good, strong linear range. So Brandon needs to ask, how does... Ace Queen of Diamonds fair from the big blind um, against a good strong linear range from out of position. And I think the answer is actually not very well. And look, I'm not going to say you should actually fold Ace Queen in this scenario because this is a loose wild game and Ace Queen of Diamonds goes way up in value when you're playing against players who are, you know, raising Jack Two of Hearts from early position and raising Eight Two of Clubs from under the gun plus one, right? Um, so I certainly don't mind calling in this scenario just trying to flop well because three ways ace queen of diamonds is going to do well enough so i'm okay with calling that said folding could be fine too or four betting as a bluff could be fine too he does call though and george decides eh, eight two of clubs is good enough it's probably not dominated that's accurate this time and we see a flop of eight eight four it's exactly what george wanted that's his jackpot flop Brandon checks, George checks, and now Bart with his pocket aces should very likely continuation bet. This is a situation where you usually want to be betting frequently for a small amount because usually your opponents are just drawing dead or nearly dead, or you are drawing dead or nearly dead. But more often than not, your opponents are just going to be way behind. So Bart does bet $375 into the $1,100 pot, which I think is great. And George calls with the ace queen of diamonds. There is a diamond on the flop, so he has a backdoor flush draw and two over cards. And this is a dicey spot. I mean, and this is a scenario you're often going to be in when you call from out of position with a hand like ace queen of diamonds. I don't think Brandon really has any better options than to just call with ace high that very easily could be good. Um, so I, I think this really is his only logical line. If he had a hand like jack 10 of diamonds that he decided to splash around with preflop, he could certainly elect to check raise that because it has backdoor draws and you know ace queen or jack ten of diamonds just doesn't win when it checks down but ace queen of diamonds actually does win sometimes when it goes check 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 on the turn in the river so i like this i think this is perfectly fine but like i said you really don't want to be in this spot george now who has played every pot so far on the stream makes it 1500 bucks now luckily for bart <laughs> He started this hand with only 200 big blinds, $5,000. Remember a few episodes ago, I said that when you are playing in these very, very loose, aggressive, splashy games, one reasonable option is to just play shallow or stacked. That way, if you do happen to run into a setup spot, kind of like this, you are not going to lose all your money. Now, the other side of that argument is that, well, if my opponents are going off and they're raising here with all the 6-5 offsuits and 7-5 offsuits and probably know like four, three, two of spades, right? If they're really getting after it, I want them to be as deep stacked as I possibly can. And that actually is true. But if you really don't want to be having 400 big blind swings, and you know, that very easily could be the case, especially if you don't necessarily get to play in very, very, um, you know, relatively high stakes and wild games on a regular basis, or perhaps you care about um, being relatively conservative with your bankroll, then just buy in shallow or there's nothing wrong with that. And again, 200 big blinds is not shallow. So don't think you have to have as much money as your opponents. Notice here that if um, Bart did buy in for the full $30,000 that uh, George has, 
he'd have to call a $1,500 flop check raise, probably a $5,000 turn bet, then a $20,000 river bet with his aces to get to the showdown. And uh, <laughs> that starts to become a lot of fun. So anyway, Bart does get raised, and I think he should definitely call in this scenario. Um, if he does re-raise all in, he's just always going to get called by an eight, and the junkie draws like 6-5 are going to fold. So you really want to keep hands like 6-5 in this pot. Um, notice him taking a little look at Brandon. And definitely pay attention to see what Brandon looks like. If Brandon is pumped up and psyched, like, haha, got him, then you can justify calling. I'm sorry, justify folding the aces, because then you're probably against an eight a lot of the time. But if Brandon looks like he's done with it, then it's perfectly fine. So Bart does elect to call. And it looks like George goes all in on the turn without even seeing the turn. Or if he did bet, it was insanely fast. He puts Bart all in. Bart has to now put in $2,600 into the pot that's going to be $12,500-ish. So Bart needs to win 25% or 20% of the time with aces. Is your opponent bluffing 25 or 22 or something like that percent of the time? The answer is just yes. Um, well, to be fair, the answer may be no, but the answer is probably yes. Given the way we've seen George play, I would be surprised if George did not make this same play with hands like 6-5 and 7-5 and 7-6 uh, for gut shots, or perhaps even stuff like backdoor flush draws. Did I even say the turn card? The turn card was a three. <laughs> um, so, I mean, to be fair, all turn cards are blanks besides a 7-6-5 or 4, because maybe there's some worldly check raises a 4. Um, so this is just an unfortunate spot for Bart where he is going to lose his money and he loses all of his money like a champ. They do get it all in. They do run it twice. It does not matter. And Bart plays in this game for about one minute <laughs> and loses 5,000 bucks. Poker's a fun game sometimes. And look, there are going to be situations when you are playing where you just run into it. I get emails every day from people who are usually relatively new to poker or they just don't understand the variance that you're going to experience. And they're thinking, oh man, I should have folded the aces here on the 8843 board. But if you're paying attention to the way that your opponents are playing, in this scenario especially, don't fold the aces. It would be a big, big, big mistake. Now, if instead we were playing against a game where everyone was super nitty and you knew that they would literally never raise or rarely raise with a hand like 6-5 on the flop on 8-8-4. They would actually just fold it to a bet because, you know, it's only a gut shot. If that's how your opponents think, then actually folding the aces becomes reasonable, especially if you know or at least have a good idea that they will only raise with an 8 or better. But that's not the game we are playing. And that's actually why a lot of people struggle to move up in stakes because in the very small stakes games about uh, against, like, weak, tight players... They really do just have an eight every time they raise. But as you move up, you're going to start running into more and more aggressive opponents who will raise the nut hands and then the obvious bluffs. And right here on 884, there are a lot of obvious bluffs. You may say, what obvious bluffs are there? Well, like I said, the gut shot straight draws, but then also hands like nine, seven of diamonds for backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. Those hands should be raised. And if your opponents are raising those hands, then you just can't fold the aces. And sometimes you're going to run into it when they actually have it. That is the power of playing a strategy that raises more than only the nuts. You end up getting paid when you actually do get the nuts. So that's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, make sure you check out my poker training site. I have a lot of high-level content over at pokercoaching.com. You can get a completely free trial membership. And if you really want to take your game to the next level, check out Poker Coaching Premium. There, I hire coaches that I want to learn from. I've hired um, some of the best exploitative players in the world, as well as some of the best game theory optimal players in the world to bring you all of the educational poker material you need to crush the game. So check that out at pokercoaching.com slash premium. Good luck in the games. Click like, click subscribe, share this with your friends. And I'll talk to you next time.